He's hitting 238. Jay's trusting his fastball, working much quicker, and not concerned about one bad pitch during the course of an inning. And he starts Cole Calhoun off with a fastball low for ball one. Calhoun had a good night last night a single a double a couple of walks hitting 268 with 12 homers overall and some pretty good numbers against Hap four for seven including two home runs. I think he's going to say that he's facing a different Jay Hap now and Jay's really using that fastball a lot. What he does is he tries to make a quality pitch early in it bat to the corners and then he'll elevate the fastball and use that cutter down and away. He also threw an occasional curveball, but he's pitching with a lot of confidence. He uses his fastball 71 percent of the time this year, and has picked up a ton of strikeouts on the fastball as he catches the bottom end of the zone right there. One and two. 31 of his last 33 strikeouts, Buck, have come on a fastball. Yeah, and the major league average is 54 percent, and Jay Happ is really using the fastball, and he just believes now. He can get anybody out with it as long as he gets ahead and pitches from ahead. There's Break. that breaking yep. ball. But Jay, when he was here with the Blue Jays initially, he was very deliberate. And he was thinking about every pitch, worried about the consequences on every pitch. Now he's thinking about the overall game. I got to pitch deep into this game. If something bad happens in the first inning, I can overcome that. 2 2. Fastball in on his hands and a Calhoun bounces it foul. Hap has not lost a game since June the 6th. He's 11 and 0 in his last 12 starts with a 2.53 ERA. He's coming off a win over the Yankees eight days ago. So like a lot of the starters in the rotation right now, he's on some extra days rest. He's on seven days rest. When seven and a third in that game gave up four runs, including three solo home runs. Walk one struck out nine swing and a miss he gets Calhoun defensively behind half tonight left to right in the outfield it'll be Melvin Upton Junior Kevin Pilar and Ezekiel Carrera again Jose Bautista is back but he is the DH tonight Donaldson Tulowitzki Darwin Barney again for Devin Travis that finger is still an issue Edwin Encarnacion at first. And Russell Martin doing the catching. It's a short bench for the Blue Jays tonight. Devin Travis not available because of the finger. And Michael Saunders is out because of a hamstring issue tonight. Well, you saw Tulowitzki and Darwin up the middle, and we point them out because Jay Happ has got 19 double plays turned behind him, the fourth most in the American League. So these two figure in tonight defensively. Mike Trout will drop one into right field, a base hit. That'll bring up Albert Pujols, who had a great night last night, four for four, including his 584th career home run. First inning home run for Pujols after Trout had homered right ahead of him, and Pujols hits the cutter down and away for Trout and Pujols. Both those home runs in the first inning, home runs number 24, respectively, for the two sluggers from Los Angeles. Next RBI for Albert, as you can see, will give him 100 on the season. And it would mark the 13th time that he reaches the century mark in RBIs. The only players to do that are Alex Rodriguez, who's done it 14 times, Jimmy Fox, Lou Gehrig, and Babe Ruth, who have each done it 13 times. Pujols is one RBI away from becoming the fifth player to drive in 100 or more in 13 different seasons. Absolutely incredible consistency for Albert Pujols. And as soon as he hit the big leagues with the Cardinals you could tell he was a special player and he started hitting in his rookie season and hasn't stopped. When it's all said and done even if and who knows how healthy he'll be over the next five years he signed for about five more years if he can continue to play. He's going to wind up when you look at home runs RBI slugging percentage total bases whatever you want to look at he's going to wind up one of the top four or five sluggers the game has ever seen. Yeah. He is truly a Hall of Famer no question about that but he's going to be in those categories way up there at the top. He hits a missile down the left field line but it is foul. Very close down the left field line Chad Whitson the third base umpire. 
gave it a look and signaled foul and Mike Sosha is already out of the dugout looking for an explanation. Nobody has a better angle on that than the manager sitting in that first base dugout. He's out to talk to the crew chief Eric Cooper and by my eye I thought it was a home run. I thought it was inside the netting and I bet you Sosha is going to have him look at it. But he's going to walk back to the dugout and they must have had a chance to look at it. But watch this ball down here. There's the netting that is the foul netting and it appears as though it is going to go foul. It doesn't hit the netting but it looked like it went around the netting and wow. that fan right behind yeah. it. I mean you can't get any closer no. than that less but it truly was foul less than a foot away from a two run homer for Albert Pujols. The count remains one and two. Now get a double play. Breaking ball down and in to even it up. Well, you can see how quickly Pujols got to that inside pitch. He hasn't lost much bat speed at all. Here's another look at that drive to the second deck, and it's foul. There's no question about it. Got out fast, didn't it? <laughs> in a heart. <laughs> he got all of it. 2 2, and a base hit past a diving Donaldson. Trout up to second on the play. Pujols is really in a groove right now. Well, when he gets hot, it's hard to get him out. I don't care how hard or how well you pitch him, he's going to get his hits. Donaldson, with an extra effort making that dive, he knew that if he could glove it, they'd had a chance to turn two with Pujols running. He's not running well at all right now. Here's CJ Crone, the first baseman, hitting 273 with 11 home runs. Came off the DL on Saturday, missed 35 games with a broken bone in his hand. And in the 30 games leading into that injury, he had driven in 32 runs. He was as hot as any hitter in the lineup when he got hurt just back a few days ago. Two for four with a home run in his career against Happ. And quickly in the hole, 0 and 2. This is where Jay Happ has really excelled, pitching with runners in scoring position. He's got the fifth highest percentage of batters retired. He's done a terrific job when he's got runners in scoring position. Check that. It's 78.1%. He's second to Drew Pomerantz of retiring batters with runners in scoring position. Fastball misses inside. That's been a great pitch for Hap running that fastball in on the righties. And you can see Russell Martin held the target up high. He just kind of lets Jay turn it loose upstairs. And Jay's not really trying to make a perfect pitch. He just wants it to get that late action. A flinch there by Eric Cooper. Thought about calling it a strike for the briefest of moments, but decided it was inside. Russell Martin looking for uh, having an early conversation with Cooper trying to understand the, the strike zone that did look like it was an inch or two inside off the plate as you can see a look back by Hap and the 2 2 and a swing and a ground ball for the second baseman Barney step on second on the first double play to end the inning. As Buck mentioned Hap's excelled in getting double plays he gets one here in the first Jose Bautista will lead it off. Encarnacion continues to be hot. He went two for three and added a walk in last night's game. And speaking of hot, Russell Martin is hot as well, drove in another run in last night's ball game. They're going up against Jared Weaver, and Weaver's had a tough season. The veteran 
Just not throwing the ball very well. Eight and eleven with an ERA almost at five and a half. Been a rough season for him, both lefties and righties, hitting over 300. And now for the first time since coming off the DL, Blue Jays fans will welcome back Jose Bautista. Designated hitter number 19, Jose Bautista. Well, he's as loose and limber as he was before he got hurt. Hasn't lost anything in the stretching department. Hopefully the knee is okay. It's the left knee. Buck talked about it earlier. He's got a brace on. He is the DH. He is likely going to DH a fair bit, which means more playing time for Melvin Upton Jr. and probably less playing time for Justin Smoke with Encarnacion moving to first and had a simulated game down in Dunedin yesterday, as we mentioned. Got a lot of advance in there, said before the game it went well. And let's see how he responds to game action here against Jared Weaver. Knowing Jose Bautista, he's liable to hit a couple home runs tonight. Uh, he has a flair for the dramatic, and just having his presence back in the lineup is a welcome bat for the Blue Jays. Strike of the knees, one and one. You can see 83 miles an hour. That's about top end for Weaver with the fastball. Never a hard thrower, but he's lost a lot of velocity over the last two or three years. And he really knows what he's doing. He's a, a crafty veteran pitcher. And just two years ago, had a had a very good year, won 18 games in 2012, won 20, had an ERA of 281, has some very good career numbers against the Blue Jays, as you can see. But it has been a tough year for him this year. But he gets Bautista swinging at a fastball out of the zone for out number one. Defensively, let's take a look at the Angels, the way they set up here tonight. In the after, Nick Bless, Mike Trout, and Cole Calhoun. Calhoun has nine outfield assists in right. Caleb Coward in third, Simmons and Petit up the middle. CJ Crohn's the first baseman, and Jet Mandy coming off a terrific night last night back behind the plate doing the catching for Jared Weaver. Bandy has thrown out 40% of the base runners, and he had his first career four hit game last night, so Mike Sosha. Being the smart manager that he is puts him right back in there. Funny how that works huh? Bruce Bochy who's going to be in the Hall of Fame one day as a manager actually has an unwritten policy. You hit a home run you play the next day. He says how can I take a guy out he hit a home run. <laughs> sometimes you know there's a lot of science to it and sometimes it's just a gut feel. Here's Josh Donaldson. Tried to check the swing and he succeeded on the appeal down to first. I think it's going to be a challenge for the Blue Jay hitters tonight. To really understand that this is what Weaver features now. It's 83, 84 miles an hour, and you just got to tone it down. You almost have to make sure he lets it loose before you commit to the swing. Ground ball in the hole, it's short, but Simmons was playing Donaldson to pull the ball, and he'll throw him out with ease, two down. Yeah, for major league hitters, it must almost look like a softball because it's coming in so slow, and there's a tendency, I would think, to swing from your heels. Yeah, and, and what you have to do is just hit it like it's batting practice, literally. Like, okay, he's not going to throw hard. I don't have to start my swing early. Just stay back, use the big part of the field, go the other way, just like you would during batting practice. But it's hard to do with the adrenaline of a major league game, and it takes you an advantage or two to realize this is it. And you can see that swing. Yep. Even by Encarnacion standards, that was a huge cut, and he comes up empty. And another big cut, and he pops it up into foul territory. Crone over near the seats won't have a play. You know the Blue Jays have been striking out a lot and there's been a lot of people talking about whether they need to cut their swings down and this is the guy you're going to have to cut your swing down on. I mean you have big swings all night long and you're going to pop up a lot of balls you're going to hit a lot of balls off the end of the bat. Weaver out in front of Encarnacion no balls two strikes. Here it comes and it's upstairs ball one. It's not much different. 
from the velocity say of R.A. Dickey's fastball. Now Dickey will throw the knuckleball 80 to 90 percent of the time but when he mixes in a fastball. It's around Weaver's velocity. And Encarnacion laces one to left field. Off the wall on a bounce. On his way to second. Throw a little bit offline and that's the difference as he dives in head first. Buzz had a shot at Encarnacion and Edwin batting with two outs. It's a good time to gamble. Stretch that ball into an extra base hit and get yourself into scoring position for Encarnacion. His 29th double of the season. He stays back with two strikes. Didn't look like he took a stride at all. And Buzz plays it off the wall, but his throw is offline. He gets a nice one hop throw to the bag at second, but had it been on the money, Encarnacion probably would have been out. See how it tailed away from second and took the second baseman away from the bag. So a two out double for Encarnacion and a runner in scoring position for the hot Russell Martin. Drove in a run last night, his 54th on the season. He's got 14 home runs on the year. And he takes inside ball one. I think Russell Martin is primed to have a big game against Jared Weaver because of where he's been hitting the ball. He's been hitting the ball to center and right, taking the pitches away and not trying to muscle him. And if he does that against Weaver, I think he'll have a big night. Down and away ball two. Martin started off the year very slowly as Blue Jays fans know hit down in the order got hotter and hotter kept moving up further and further in the lineup now. Uh, kind of established in there as the leadoff hitter now that could change with Bautista back when Travis comes back. If Travis winds up back at the top of the order again and Bautista's up there somewhere as well. In which case you might see Martin move down to five to Lewitsky hitting sixth, and so on and so on. Yeah I think you're going to see many different lineups over the last several weeks of this season but you got to have Devin Travis back healthy and he has not been healthy the Blue Jays have only had their top eight regulars in the lineup together four games this year four games John Gibbons has had to mix and match all season long whether it's Travis being out Bautista Tulowitzki who was on the DL Pilar on the DL. Martin tried to check it and succeeded says Jim Wolf down at first three balls and a strike. The Blue Jays had their regular lineup for two games against San Diego they won both of those games and then two more games at the end of July against the Orioles and they went one and one in those games so when they have their regular lineup together they're pretty good obviously but it hasn't happened often enough to Lewitsky waiting on deck hoping for a shot this inning. And Martin will take the breaking ball outside for ball four. He did not look over anxious in that at bat at all. Now that's a good sign because you think OK I can really hit this guy he's not throwing much and the tendency is to expand your strike zone. Russell laid off that breaking ball. So he's at first and Carnacion is at second and here's to Lewitsky hitting 252 with 21 homers and 64 driven in. Blue Jays looking to jump on top early as the Angels did against them last night. And a strike of the knees 0 and 1. The Blue Jays have been pretty good counter punchers this year when they get beat the first game of a series they come back and they'll punch you in the face again and they've done such a great job of winning series. Obviously that's what's at stake here tonight. And they get a little help on the out of town scoreboard already today. The Red Sox lost earlier today, two to one to the Rays. So that's two days in a row where Tampa Bay's defeated Boston. So the Blue Jays at the moment are in sole possession of first place in the American League East, a half game ahead of the Red Sox. A little unexpected help. Looked like Boston had a win last night. Tampa Bay tied it, then won it in extra innings on a ball that was misplayed and then thrown to the plate. But the tag could not be made in time. Today, the Red Sox had a one to nothing lead. Tampa Bay tied it in the sixth, got another run in the seventh, and that stood up. Swing and a miss, one and two. And Boston's got a tough schedule to wipe up the season. They'll go home to play Kansas City and Tampa Bay on a homestand. Then they go out to Oakland to play Oakland, San Diego, and then finish up that road trip here in Toronto. 
They got a tough road schedule. Weaver trying to get out of it ahead of Tulowitzki. One ball, two strikes. A look back at Encarnacion and the pitch, and Tulowitzki lays off just outside. Well, that's the one challenge that Jared Weaver has now because he's not throwing very hard with his fastball. Hitters don't have to make a commitment early. It gives them a little bit longer to judge whether or not it's a breaking ball or a fastball and whether or not it's a ball or a strike. You don't have to commit as quickly as you once did against Weaver. And now Bandy's going to head out to the mound. You know, Weaver led the league in strikeouts. At 233 strikeouts in 2010, and he finished in the top five in the Cy Young voting for three consecutive seasons in 10, 11, and 12. He won 20 games in 2012. I mean, he's been a terrific yeah. pitcher. He was an ace. Uh, he was a yeah. legitimate number one for a few years for this team. In his 11th year in the big leagues, all of them with the Angels. Slow breaking ball to Lewitsky swings over the top of it and the Blue Jays will leave a couple of men on against Weaver here in the bottom of the first. tonight and likely for a few games as he makes his way back he wanted to make it perfectly clear to me today that he is still very much capable of playing in the right field every day he said the injuries that he's occurred this year are similar to being hit by a pitch or running into a catcher he says in no way is his body breaking down and he doesn't want people to be confused by that he finished off by saying quote my career is far from being done guys it's been a long tough season for Jose Bautista but he in his mind he has has a lot left to give and knowing that he's a free agent at the end of the year I'm sure he would really like to show it down the stretch. All right Barry thank you and to make no mistake although the Blue Jays have played well when Bautista has been out he is an asset they need him back they need another uh, authoritative bat if you will in the lineup a guy who can do some damage with one swing of the bat even when he's struggling to swing the bat he takes his walk still has a good on base percentage as Anderson Simmons grounds out to Darwin Barney one pitch one out for half here in the second and again it just gives John Gibbons more options when everybody's healthy now you've got another outfielder so you can rotate them through the DH spot if you want whether it's Saunders or Bautista or Encarnacion can DH there's just uh, a lot more flexibility on the roster well and just think about it when you have that many good hitters in your lineup say say Bautista doesn't hit a particular pitcher well maybe Tulowitzki hits them and when you have all your weapons together then it's going to balance out the offense that much better. You saw Michael Saunders in the dugout. He is out tonight. Hamstring acted up on him last night. So no Saunders, no Travis. The bench tonight consists of Josh Tolley and Justin Smoke. That's it. So if they need an infielder for some reason, I bet you Stroman's going to run back in the dugout and see if he's got his old glove with him. He'd, he'd love to jump in there and get an opportunity to play. Yeah, he sure would. He'd be anxious to volunteer, you bet. But I think they know that if somebody is injured and can't play a couple of days, they will make an adjustment yep. accordingly. Ryan Goins has been sent back to Buffalo after Bautista was activated. Bandy grounds out for out number two.
Get a hit of color during Canada's Color Expert Sale. Only at Home Hardware and Building Center locations. Homeowners helping homeowners with expert advice. Dan Schoen to Buck Martinez with you at Rogers Center. Glad there's a roof on the building tonight. Raining hard through the afternoon. No score, top of the second, two down of the base is empty. Nick Buss, the left fielder, who hit his first big league home run a couple of nights ago, steps in for the Angels. One other thing to keep in mind about the roster is in a week it's September and the roster will expand. The Blue Jays will have to make a move when they bring Aaron Sanchez back from Dunedin on August 31st, but then as of September the 1st, they can bring up a bunch of guys. Goins for sure would be back. We talked last night. Another catcher will come up. You could see Dalton Pompey. You could see Jesus Montero. And there, no doubt you'll see a couple more relievers come up as well. It'll depend on who's on the roster, but I don't think they want to overload their bench. You don't want a bunch of guys that aren't going to have an opportunity to do anything. You have to have a workable roster, that's for sure. Pitch outside, two and two. Jay Happ gave up two hits in the first inning, but then got CJ Crone to bounce into an inning ending double play. He's gotten a couple of ground outs here for the first two outs of the second. Well, that's a good pitch. You can see the late life on the fastball, and it's really nothing tricky. I mean, you've been here when the visiting team will come in and say, What's up with Jay Happ? How come all of a sudden he's a 17 game winner? Well, you can see it in his face. He's confident. He knows that his stuff plays. He can overmatch hitters with his fastball. Strike three called. And the inning is over. Second strike out of the night for half Blue Jays coming up at the bottom of the second. On Sportsnet. Presented by the all new 2017 Ridgeline, our newest vehicle and their newest band, Honda, official vehicle of the Toronto Blue Jays. To the bottom of the second in front of another big crowd here at Rogers Center, 40,000 plus every night. No score between the Angels and the Blue Jays. Blue Jays left a couple of men on in the bottom of the first, an Encarnacion double and then a Martin Walk. It'll be Pilar, Upton, and Carrera coming up at the bottom of the second against Jared Weaver. Pilar hitting 259, seven home runs, and 45 driven in. And a breaking ball in for a strike. Big swing and a ground ball. That is a fair ball, and he will be out by a step on a strong throw by Coward. Yeah, Coward's got a strong arm. We have seen that all throughout this series. 
He knocks it down. This is just his fourth start at third base this season, but you can see how quickly he gets on it and then airs it out. I mean, he threw a frozen rope over there to first base to nail Pilar. We were getting a, a couple of ground outs in the early going tonight. He is an extreme fly ball pitcher as Melvin Upton Jr. steps in for the first time tonight. In Jared Weaver's last three starts, he's gotten 50 outs in the air and 12 on the ground. That's living dangerously. Especially in this ballpark, the way the ball carries here at Rogers Center, you start giving up too many fly balls, and you're going to find yourself trailing in a hurry. Weaver's contract is up at the end of this season. C.J. Wilson has been on the DL all season long. Both of them make about 20 million. Each of them makes about 20 million. Weaver has struggled. Wilson hasn't pitched. We talked about the Josh Hamilton contract. They're still paying Hamilton in excess of 20 million this year. Houston Street, veteran closers on the DL, knee surgery. He's done for the season. Mike Sosha does not want to use pitching injuries as an excuse, but pitching injuries are the biggest reason why this team is 20 games under 500 right now. Garrett Richards, another guy we talked about last night. He's been hurt much of the year. 2 2 to Upton, and he fights off the curveball. Another guy, that guy right there, Richards with big time stuff, but elbow injury, torn ulnar collateral ligament, won't be back until some point next season. Had a frightening knee injury a couple of years ago, feeling a ball, and just one of those guys that hasn't been able to stay healthy for a full season. Laced into left field, that's a base hit for Upton. Bus racing over towards the line. Upton on his way to second, and in there safely. The season for Melvin Upton Jr. and he stayed on this fastball and is able to get it over the third baseman's head. He drives it down into the corner and he's thinking too right out of the box. Musk gets over and plays it pretty well. Makes a decent throw into second, but Upton is in there with a hard slide. Once that ball gets down in the corner, he's thinking two all the way. Looks up and knows he's going to have to slide in there quickly and just ahead of the tag of Petit. So the second double of the night for the Blue Jays. They got one with two outs in the first off the bat of Encarnacion. It could not cash him in. Let's see what Carrera can do here. Hitting 245 on the season. Fouls one back our way. Carrera had an RBI single in last night's game, but the outcome had long been decided. That came with two down in the bottom of the ninth and made the score eight to two, which was the final. Blue Jays got a couple of late runs, but trailed the entire night against the Angels last night. No one. A little bit upstairs, a ball and a strike. Weaver's numbers are about the same against lefties as there are they are against righties. Obviously he faces almost an entirely right hand hitting lineup. When he faces the Blue Jays. In fact, this is the only left handed bat in the lineup tonight for the Blue Jays. One and two. Now you can hear your teammates when they come back from hitting against Weaver say, hey man, you got to really slow it down. But until you get up there and see it firsthand, it's a challenge. Everybody wants to get up and do some damage against Weaver, but you really got to tone it down. Curveball bounced out to second. Knocked down, picked up by Petit, and he won't have a play. Carrera will reach on the air, and the Blue Jays have runners on the corners with a one out. Now that's the fifth error of the season for Petit, and you just can't afford to make errors behind Jared Weaver. He got a routine ground ball, and you've got to turn it into an out. Not only does he bob it initially, but then kind of a lackluster effort to go after it. And he just never made the play, and that's got to be an out for Weaver. He can't afford to give up extra outs in an inning. So a gift for the Blue Jays there. 
instead of runner of third two down it's first and third one out. And the batter will be Darwin Barney. He has led off the last couple of games went one for four with a double last night went two for four with a double the night before he's hitting 348 in his last six games eight for twenty three. Barney becoming and has been all season valuable for this team in a variety of different roles and right now it's filling in for Devin Travis. Well obviously he was a very good everyday player he won a gold glove by playing second base for the Cubs but he can play second short and third base. He's actually made an appearance in the outfield but he's really been a valuable asset to the Blue Jays. And he would seem like the kind of guy given the kind of player he is that he can stay within himself to borrow a cliche against a pitcher like this and just think about hey if I shoot the ball the other way there's an RBI waiting for me. Now obviously his game is not power it's about line drives and he is focused in that vein right now. Takes low ball two. So she's always got to be a little bit on edge because I mean Weaver's given it everything he has but there's just not as much left in the tank as there used to be. Yeah and obviously when you sent Weaver out to pitch a game four or five years ago he just kind of sat back and watched him do his thing. So she thinks something's up with Barney and Carrera possible hit and run and. Mike does the running game defense he being a former catcher and a great catcher will give the defensive signs to the catcher Jet Bandy and then he'll pass them on to the pitcher. If you want to know what those defensive signs would be it'll be throw over hold the ball step off pitch out. Basically, what you're going to instruct the pitcher to do in these situations. Any chance Barney gets the green light 3 0? No. I don't think you can afford to give him the green light with Bautista on deck. Just a bit low for ball four. And Jose Bautista is coming to the plate with the bases loaded. Weaver's got to live on the edges with the kind of stuff that he has right now. Thought he had a pitch at the bottom end of the zone, didn't get the call, so it loads the bases for Bautista, who struck out his first time up. Chased a high fastball up above the belt against Weaver his first time up. Bautista has never had success against Weaver. He's now one for 16 against the righty. Got five career grand slams. The Blue Jays only hit two grand slams this season. And Josh Donaldson has hit both of those. Upton at third, Carrera at second, Barney at first for Bautista. Isn't it interesting? You know, we ball players always talk about the baseball gods, and now they have Bautista in this situation in his first game back off the DL. Bases loaded, one out, and a chance to put the Blue Jays out in front. Field. Calhoun will have room to make the catch. Upton will tag and come in to score. On his way to third on the play is Carrera, and the sack fly gives the Blue Jays a one to nothing lead. Well, there you see Bautista make an adjustment after his first hit back. He stayed back. He was patient, got the ball out over the plate, and hits it deep enough to right field to cash in the sack fly. That's the value of having Jose back in the lineup, a very smart hitter. He understands adjustments and he knew that Weaver punched him out on a high fastball his first time up in that situation. All he needed to do was hit one to the outfield. So the end result first and third two, two down for Josh Donaldson. Donaldson grounded out his first time up.
Funny how ball players work. Troy Tulowitzki, formerly of the Rockies, of course, began using a bat of his ex teammate, Nolan Arenado. After the Blue Jays were out in Colorado, he has done very well with it. And maybe somebody else is trying to change his fortunes re recently because Josh Donaldson has come to the plate tonight with a Nolan Arenado bat. Maybe just trying to mix it up, change his luck a little bit. Ball players aren't superstitious, no. are they? <laughs> not, not a bit. Josh Sartulo get the hot with that Arnado bat, and now he's picked it up. Hey, hey, let me try something different, just a different feel. It might even be the same bat. In fact, Tulowitzki uses the same bat as Arnado. They were teammates in Colorado, but he picked up the bat from Nolan when the Blue Jays were in Denver. Liner to center, Trout will make the catch. To end the inning. The Blue Jays, though, do get one run off Weaver. Jose Bautista and his return from the DL in his second at bat sends a sack fly to deep right, one to nothing, Blue Jays. And your membership will also give you the opportunity to purchase 2016 postseason tickets, although it is a limited time offer while supplies last. Season ticket member benefits include access to season ticket member exclusive events like enrollment into the My Blue Jays program. And you can visit bluejays.com slash season tickets for more details. One of the cool things about the My Blue Jays program, guys, is you can do things like go sit in on John Gibbons post game news conference, which is a lot of fun. That it is. You should see his pregame media scrum now. <laughs> you can't get into those. No. <laughs> but they're a lot better when he wins. I know that. <laughs> Speaking from experience as a manager. Here's Caleb Coward, the third baseman for the Angels, and he fouls one off in a quick 0 2 count against Jay Happ. Coward, Gregorio Petit, and then leadoff hitter Cole Calhoun. Jose Bautista is back. He is the DH, and he has driven in the only run of the game on a sack fly in the bottom of the second. Now there's another thing he brings to this team too is a tremendous wealth of knowledge as a hitter. So he can go up to Brooke Jacoby that can talk about Weaver and that might help Jacoby pass something else along to some of his other hitters. Jose is a great student of the game. And Coward chases down and away to strike out for the first out of the inning. Here's Jamie Campbell with an update. All right, Jamie, thank you. Well, Kansas City, that winning streak of theirs was snapped last night. It was a nine game winning streak before they lost to the Marlins last night. The Royals, incidentally, are heading to Fenway Park over the weekend. They've got a series with the Red Sox. Swing and a miss by Gregorio Petit. Yeah, Kansas City just couldn't get anything going against Jose Fernandez last night. They were shut out on eight hits, and Fernandez, he's nearly 
unhittable pitching at home. Royals still holding on to some slim hopes that they can get back, really get back into the playoff hunt. Swing and a miss, one and two. Kansas City beginning play five games back of Baltimore for the second wild card spot. But they're tied with the Yankees. They've got the Astros, Mariners, and Tigers ahead of them before they even get to the Orioles. Upstairs, and this time Petit wouldn't chase. The Blue Jays are a half game ahead of the Red Sox and a full game ahead of Baltimore. Baltimore and Washington scoreless in the top of the fourth. Strike three call. Looked a little bit inside. Petit felt it was, but Hap gets the call. Well, this is what Jay can do. Once he gets into a roll, he can rattle off back to back strikeouts. And we saw him strike out six straight first time he was with the Blue Jays. And this is that live fastball. Martin does a great job of catching it, presenting it to Eric Cooper, the home plate umpire. And Petit is surprised, but that's three strikeouts in a row now for Jay Hap. Two down in the inning, and here's Cole Calhoun, who struck out in his first at bat. Blue Jays just play him slightly to pull on the infield, slightly to the opposite field in the outfield. Hap would love to get Calhoun and not have to deal with Trout and perhaps Pujols with men on base this inning. Both Trout and Pujols with base hits off Hap in the first inning, the only two Angels to reach so far. Pretty locked in right now. Nice backhanded pick by Encarnacion. And the inning is over. To the bottom of the third, Encarnacion is going to lead it off for the Blue Jays. He'll be followed by Russell Martin and then Troy Tulowitzki. The Blue Jays leading one to nothing. outside but inside it's a perfect night to be sitting in those big comfy green chairs in the TD comfort zone and tonight we welcome guests of TD and parents it's time to get them set for school with five great high five deals from Rogers including offers on phones tablets data and more on select two year share everything plans hurry into a Rogers store today Dan have you got your uh, son all his uh, electronics for the year he is uh, he is excellent at electronics there you go. <laughs> he doesn't need my help in that department. Bottom of the third, and the Blue Jays lead the Angels one to nothing. As Edwin Encarnacion takes a strike. Doubled in the first inning. The double for Edwin is 197th as a member of the Blue Jays. Moves him into 10th in franchise history in that department. Number nine on the list is Rance Mullinix. Seven ahead. Ground ball down to third. Cowart will throw him out one down. Well, Jared Weaver, we've talked about his velocity and how it's down from what it was in his heyday. And you look at the pitch usage now, and that might reflect the fact that the velocity of the fastball is only 82.3 miles an hour. So he's going to throw you everything. He'll throw a curveball from time to time. He throws the curveball more than he throws the fastball. And he throws the cutter more than he throws the curveball. 
but he's going to mix it up because he can't overpower you. There was a time when he could pound that fastball inside and use the slider away to the right handers. Here's Russell Martin. Do you ever remember you? Done that for hundreds of pitchers. You've seen their breakdown. Do you ever remember seeing a pitcher throw his fastball as infrequently and throw as many other pitches as often as Jared Weaver? No. There are only two pitchers in baseball that throw fewer fastballs than Jared Weaver. Fly ball to center field with playable for Trout, two down. And both of those two pitchers that throw fewer fastballs than Weaver are knuckleball pitchers. R.A. Dickey and Stephen Wright. So he's got to mix it up, that's for sure, and that's why those splits are so even. A little bit of everything at this point of his career. The interesting thing is that Jared Weaver's only 33 years old. He's six seven, but he's always been a tall drink of water, yeah. and you know the legs are what really drives the pitcher through that delivery. Tulowitzki grounds one up the middle, long run to his left for Simmons, and enough arm to get Tulo to end the inning. Blue Jays go in order on five pitches. Here comes the ultimate cleanup crew brought to you by Home Hardware's exclusive line of the ultimate hard hitting and tough on grime cleaning products. Arguably one of the best players through the first four or five years of his career that we've ever seen. If we compare Mike Trout in wins above replacement with a couple of the all time great center fielders, Mickey Mantle and Ken Griffey Jr., Trout not only is right there, but he is ahead of them. The combination of power and speed is almost unrivaled in the game. Yeah, he is a terrific defender. He's got power, he has the stolen base ability, he saves runs with his glove, and he scores runs with his bat and his wheels. You know, I asked Darwin Barney, who spent a lot of time in the National League, I said, is there a comparable player to Trout in the National League? And he thought for a while and said, a few years ago, it would be Andrew McCutcheon. Fly ball to right field. Carrera still going back, has room on the edge of the warning track to make the grab. But anytime you're a player and you're Compared to Mickey Mantle and Ken Griffey Jr., you know you're in great company. Of course, Ken Griffey Jr. inducted into the Baseball Hall of Fame this summer. And as a 19 year old, Ken Griffey Jr. played 127 games, hit 264 with 16 homers and 61 RBIs. Don Trout has got that same ability, and you just hope he stays healthy and plays as long as Ken Griffey did. And we forget that Griffey got hurt a lot at the end of his. Career had bad hamstring problems in Cincinnati. A terrific young player and a quality, quality young man. What was he doing two minutes before the game tonight? Signing autographs. Yep. Good for him. There's Albert Pujols. I would love to see the scouting report for the 24 teams <laughs> who passed on Trout. And, and you know what? Nobody knew. 
they passed on him right so it's, it's not like everybody knew he was going to be as great a player as he has become. But just for interest sake I'd love to see what the 24 teams who didn't take him he went 25th overall. What they had to say about Mike Trout compared to the guy that they took in the first round of that draft. Yeah. How do you explain picking a guy over Mike Trout at this point saying well you know I just knew this other guy was going to be better and chances are those guys ahead of Trout have not even scratched the surface of being big leaguers. Pujols got it a little bit off the end of the bat and Pilar is there to make the catch. Right, we got Kevin Pilar back a couple days ago and he brings energy and a great defensive skill in the center field. Now we got Bautista back but look where Pilar is positioned against Pujols here. He's in right center. It's off the end of the bat but he never hesitated. He broke immediately on contact and closes ground and makes another terrific catch to save a hit for Jay Happ. Kevin's got a tremendous instinct for when he has to leave his feet and this ball was sinking quickly because it wasn't hitting all that hard and Jay Happ appreciates the effort he gets from his center fielder. Well there's a buzz in the stadium once yep. again and the buzz initiated by Bautista's sack fly to drive in the first run and Pilar continues to initiate the buzz from the crowd with another terrific catch certainly could be a gold glover out in center field this year he was a finalist last year as was Mike Trout it was won by Kevin Kiermaier of Tampa Bay but Kiermaier's missed a lot of time with injuries this year he's back now but he missed a good chunk of the season and it wouldn't be shocking to see Trout win it wouldn't be shocking to see Pilar win it you brought up another name when we were talking about this off the air last night and Jackie Bradley Jr. Yeah Jackie Bradley Jr. is going to be in a discussion as well but Pilar has made so many of these plays to take hits away from opposing batters. Crone pops it up. Down the right field line who's going to get there it'll be Carrera to make the catch and the inning is over. Three up three down they go and Jay Happ no doubt appreciative of the defense behind them specifically the diving catch from Kevin Pillar. Live on your phone and tablet with the MLB.com at that app. Customize it back to feature the Blue Jays and stay up to the moment at any moment with scores, news, live game video highlights, and much more. Download MLB.com at that. It is the number one app for live baseball. Guys? All right, Barry, thank you. Bottom of the fourth inning at Rogers Center. The Blue Jays are up on the Angels by a score of one to nothing. The Red Sox have already lost. They were beaten this afternoon by Tampa Bay two to one. And now the Washington Nationals have just put a run up on Baltimore. Bottom of the fourth inning, Jason Worth has homered off Ubaldo Jimenez. One to nothing Nationals. And Max Scherzer's on the mound for Washington. And he looks like Bucky's having one of those Max Scherzer kind of nights. Yeah, he hasn't walked a batter. He's allowed just one hit over four innings and struck out seven. 
He's faced one batter over the minimum. Here's Kevin Pillar leading off the bottom half of the fourth inning. Terrific catch in the top half of the inning. He'll be followed by Upton and Carrera. Pillar grounded out to third his first time up. Coward, the third baseman, station even with a bag right now. A little bit low. Again, Weaver needs the edges, needs the corners, and has not gotten a couple of calls he really wanted. And now Mike Sosha is up off his seat. Yeah, he keeps a close eye on the umpires. <laughs> He's a presence. Pilar gets under it, pops it up, middle of the infield. And it'll be Simmons to make the catch one down. Super Slow Mo Cam. Brought to you by Rogers 4K TV. Get closer to the action with four times the resolution of HD alone. Full house again here at Rogers Center. Another game and another crowd well in excess of 40,000 for the team leading the American League in attendance on the season. Melvin Upton Jr. is the batter. He got it started in the second with a double eventually came into score on a sack fly by Jose Bautista. Now he swings and pretty good wood to right field but Calhoun is there to run it down for out number two. These are the innings where Weavers had the most trouble. Once he gets into the third fourth fifth inning the batting average is against jump third inning 320 fourth inning 350 fifth inning 413. So he needs to get through this part of the lineup and keep the Blue Jays off stride a bit as he's done to this point. Just two hits allowed by Jared Weaver. Both of them doubles, one for Encarnacion and one for Upton. Here's Carrera. And bunts right through it, including leaving the bat out in the dirt in front of home plate, but he comes up empty trying to bunt for a base hit. His at bat. One of the key plays in the second inning when he hit a routine ground ball to Gregorio Petit who just couldn't make a play on it dropped it couldn't pick it up. And that error allowed Carrera to reach and more importantly meant there was just one out. With Upton at third when Bautista came up and hit the sack fly to drive in the run. Yeah, so that's an unearned run charged to Weaver in the air contributing to the only run of this game. Down and in, two balls and a strike. You made a statement about Weaver earlier. You know, a lot of guys can go to the mound when they throw 97 98 with a wicked breaking ball, but you've got to be a big man to go out there and pitch with a 94 mile an hour fastball. You've got to have a lot of confidence in your ability to make quality pitches. Change up right there, big swing and a miss, two and two. But he pitches with his head now, of course, more than ever. But you can remember in his heyday when he won 20 games, he had that crossfire delivery and he was nasty. Curveball grounded out to short, scooped up by Simmons. And it's another three up, three down inning. One nothing Blue Jays lead the Angels at the end of four. Time now for a Blue Jays Central update. Here are Jamie Campbell and Greg Zahn in the Samsung Broadcast Studio.
for the schedule ahead brought to you by WestJet. And after this series wraps up with the Angels tonight, the Minnesota Twins provide the opposition over the weekend. And then it's a whole lot of American League East, including a huge series buck that starts in Camden Yards on Monday night. And Marco Estrada will open up that game, followed by Jay Happ. And then the return of Aaron Sanchez will take place on the 31st before the off day on the 1st of September. The Blue Jays will go down to Tampa Bay and play the Rays in St. Pete. And a back end of that road trip includes a stop in New York for one final time. The Blue Jays still have a series with the Baltimore here in Toronto. It's a midweek series in the last week of the regular season. And they have two more series left, of course, with the Boston Red Sox. September 9th, 10th, and 11th here at Rogers Center. And then the last three days of the season at Fenway Park. Nothing going on that weekend. Oh. <laughs> that won't be any fun at all. Yeah, Patriots are probably playing football on Sunday. David Ortiz will play his last regular season game. It'll be a terrific weekend of baseball at Fenway Park. Inside at the knees, two balls and a strike on Simmons. Right now, John Gibbons Blue Jays with a slim half game lead in the AL East after the Red Sox lost to the Rays earlier today. Baltimore, as we mentioned, they're playing right now. They're trailing Washington one to nothing at the end of four. Bouncing ball out to second for Barney for out number one. And that continues the roll for Jay Happ. He gave up back to back one out singles in the first, and nobody has reached base since. 11 straight retired by Jay Happ. And this is the way his season has gone. And like I said earlier, he doesn't get rattled by two first inning base hits to Trout Pujols. He gets Crone to hit in a double play, and then it's been smooth sailing ever since. In years past, that next hitter Crone, after the two singles, he'd be worried about what's going to happen, all the bad things that are going to happen. Not the case anymore. He's thinking about all the good things that will happen. He really. Started turning it around after a trade last year from Seattle to Pittsburgh went over to the Pirates and had a great last two months of the season and he's just continued that role right through this season. When you look at the numbers he's 24 and 4 first in the major leagues a win loss record the ERA very good bonus batting average 219 with numbers across the board have been consistent over his last 33 starts which really makes up a full season 24 and 4 not bad. 17 and 3 this year, not bad, and certainly in the conversation for the American League Cy Young Award, without a doubt. He's 17 and 3, 305. Rick Porcello is 17 and 3, 323. And Porcello, for what it's worth, has thrown 22 more innings than Hap has, although Porcello just started last night, so Hap will make up some ground in that department. There's a swing and a miss to get Bandy. For the second out of the inning. It's pretty wide open right now in the American League for the Cy Young Award. Without question, Hap is in the conversation. You got to think Aaron Sanchez still is too. If he comes back, starts all the way through September, and keeps pitching the way that he has so far this year. Cole Hamels quietly down in Texas having a really good year, second in the league in ERA at 280. And where does Zach Britton fit in? He gave up his first run last night, first earned run last night, in 43 appearances. He has not blown a save all season. 38 for 38. Some people say, ah, they only throw 60 innings. You can't compare them to starters. Some people say, now wait a minute. That's a high leverage 60 innings. Where do you fall in that? Yeah, I think that if you're as dominant as Zach Britton has been this season and your team's in a pennant race, you have to get consideration as a Cy Young candidate. Willie Hernandez in 1984 as a closer for the Tigers in the Cy Young, and it's Happened before, Dennis Eckersley as well. Inning by inning, though, Jay Happ staking his claim to perhaps being the best pitcher in the American League this season.
A WestJet will match your status and treat you like gold. Learn more at westjet.com slash get gold. Guys, you were talking about Hap and being a candidate for Cy Young. Well, he's been asked about that a lot lately. He's a very superstitious guy. He cannot stand the questions. He does not want people to ask him. But if he continues to pitch like this, I'm afraid he's going to be hearing it all the time. Well, he is the guy, as you know, better than most, Buck, who goes about his business as quietly and modestly as just about any big league ball player you'll meet. Yeah, he sure does. And we saw him in Cleveland going through his in-between workout program, and it was strenuous. He was dragging a weighted sled around the clubhouse, getting his legs in shape. He's a hard worker like all these Blue Jay players, and he's very quiet, very unassuming, and he really appreciates the opportunity to pitch and he's kind of understated for sure. But he knows what he's doing. He understands the magnitude of this season. He's just not going to talk about it during the regular season. Meanwhile, Jared Weaver hanging in here, mixing and matching 68 mile an hour curveball, 73 mile an hour changeup, and he's out in front of Darwin and Barney. No balls and two strikes. One to nothing Blue Jays and the run was unearned. You know just because you look at Weaver's record this season you forget how dominant he has been throughout his career. Coming into this game he's 146 and 92 with a career earned run average of 354. Buck mentioned three times finished in the top five in Cy Young balloting a three time all star 20 game winner. Didn't he take his brother's spot of the rotation when he got called up as a rookie back in 2006. I believe he did. <laughs> I think Jeff was removed from the rotation either sent down or just demoted to the bullpen and Jared his little brother was called up from the minor leagues and took his big brother's spot on the rotation and Jeff made 16 starts that season Jared made 19 as he took over for his big brother. But times have changed as maybe all the innings and miles on that arm have caught up to him. The velocity has diminished. And as you can see over the last couple of years, he's a much different pitcher than he was as recently as two years ago. Yeah, and the ERA is up. The opponent's batting average reflects the fact he's lost some velocity and that fastball isn't as effective as it once was. And now he has to use that wide assortment of pitches more consistently. He goes after Bautista with that high fastball. That's how he struck him out in his first at bat. Bautista came back with a sack fly in the second. That's the only run of the ball game so far. Sends one down towards the left field corner, but foul. From the start, Honda, official vehicle of the Toronto Blue Jays, proud fan since 1977. Tell you, I'm thinking Honda, but I'm thinking hot dog too, right about now. <laughs> <laughs> they both start with an H. <laughs> that wasn't any subliminal advertising. Huh? I mean, that was they're making a, making us hungry up here in the booth. One and two, the count on to Bautista. Pops one to foul well back out of play down the left field line. It's another thing about Weaver. It's hard to keep the ball fair even if you make good contact on it. I mean granted he's been struggling teams have been hitting him hard he's given up 30 home runs on the season with the Blue Jays right now when they're making contact a lot of it is pulled foul. Straight away center field Trout throws for a moment now picks it up and gathers it in. In deep right center for out number two. That is ten in a row now sent down by Jared Weaver. Yeah, both pitchers have really locked in at the little bit of a slow start early on. Jay Happ has retired 13 in a row as we head to the middle innings. Well, they're right. It is raining, but I think they're talking about the guy at the plate. Hoping the bringer of rain can. Do something here. He's grounded out and fly down so far tonight. And he takes a pitch over the inside corner for a called strike. 
One run, two hits, no errors for the Blue Jays. No runs, two hits, and one important error committed by the Angels that helped lead to the only run of the game. 84. That's the, I believe that's the hardest pitch that we've seen tonight. That's about top end for Weaver. Yeah, he hasn't really thrown much harder than that, but he has done a great job of keeping that fastball out of the middle of the plate. And drives one straight away center deep and way gone. For Donaldson, home run number twenty nine. It's just the second home run he's hit since August 3rd when he had a two homer game down in Houston. And JD is back. Bautista's back. Pilar made a great sliding catch. The team is getting back healthy again, and the lineup is whole. We mentioned earlier that the Blue Jays have had their top eight regular players in the lineup just four times this season. And Donaldson had been in a little bit of a funk. Large in part to do that bruised hand, but this is a no doubter into the West Jet fight back in center field. And Nolan Arenado can get a shipment of bats here by tomorrow night. Yeah, send them all <laughs> overnight express. <laughs> well, when you hit him like that, you can you see use the same bat for about a week because he's hitting everything on the sweet spot. Number 29 on the season for Donaldson makes it two to nothing. On the appeal down to first, which actually was initially requested by Encarnacion, which is something that never used to happen in baseball. But now you got some hitters pointing down to first for an appeal, which is really not the way it's supposed to work. Adrian Beltre <laughs> and Encarnacion both do it yeah. quite frequently. Miguel Cabrera does it all the time. Outside three and one. RBI number 82 for JD. Got to be 450 feet. Yeah, it was way up there. Chase that one three and two, and look at how unhappy Encarnacion is with himself after he went after that breaking ball in the dirt. Russell Martin on deck. Should the inning continue? 31st home run given up this year by Jared Weaver. Two down to the bases empty. Full count on Encarnacion. Strike three called and the inning is over. Strikeout number four for Weaver. But the Blue Jays do add to their lead. Josh Donaldson hits a rocket to straightaway center field and it's two to nothing Jays.
Toronto to hold a business meeting, then right here at Rogers Centre in an Acura Luxury Suite. The account executives will find the package that best suits your needs. Go to BlueJays.com slash Luxury Suites for more details, guys. And occupying one of those suites tonight on the left, you can see Mark Shapiro, the president and CEO of the Blue Jays. And on the right, with the glasses on, Rick Brace, the president of Rogers Media, or as we like to refer to him, our boss. He's one of our bosses. Good he to is. see him out of the ballpark tonight. There's a ball sent fair down the right field line, and it'll skip up into the seats for a ground rule double for Caleb Cowart to lead off the sixth inning. And that snaps a streak of 13 consecutive batters set down by half. Coward had an RBI single in the game last night. And he was one for four in the opener, but this time he gets a leadoff double here in the sixth. He's a switch hitter and stays on this pitch away. Watch how he just drives it away from him, keeps it fair down the right field line, one up, getting the seats out of play. Here's Gregorio Petit. Called out on strikes his first time up. 31 year old second baseman who has appeared at five different positions for the Angels this year. He's hitting 265 with a couple of homers. It remains one to nothing for the Nationals over the Orioles with Washington batting in the bottom of the fifth inning. Max Scherzer's having himself a night. Five innings, one hit, no walks, seven strikeouts, and he's only thrown 58 pitches through five innings with those seven strikeouts. So. It's just a one run lead but that's some good news on the out of town scoreboard for the Blue Jays and as mentioned earlier in case you missed it Boston lost this afternoon two to one to Tampa Bay Jake Odorizzi over Drew Pomeranz. And Romero came on in the ninth and he got the last out for the save. Got David Ortiz for the last out of that game. Yeah I threw him a change up after buzzing the tower with a fastball in the previous pitch. Ortiz couldn't pull the trigger was called out looking. The Nationals they have. Lost the first three games to the Orioles in this home and home four game series. High fastball taken for ball three. Cole Calhoun on deck, and that means Trout and Pujols soon thereafter. So the Blue Jays just got half another run of the home run by Josh Donaldson, looking for the shutdown inning here in the sixth. A little bit outside for ball four. The first walk given up tonight by Hap. When you look at the most wins in the majors, Jay Happ and Rick Bors settle with the Red Sox are tied with 17 wins. Then comes Jake Arrieta has 16. Jay Happ just called out Russell Martin from behind home plate. That was kind of curious. It just might be a reminder about what set of signs they're going to use with the runner at second. But Jay Happ. Coming into this season, his career high in wins was 12. And he is now leading the majors tied with Rick Borsano with 17 wins. Six in the American League and ERA coming into this game, and he's got an 11 game win streak. 11 wins in his last 12 starts, and no decision in the other. And the Blue Jays had, they won the no decision, so they have won his last 12 starts. Calhoun takes just outside ball one. But this is a bit of a pickle right now. Two men on. Nobody out. Calhoun up and Trout and Pujols to follow. Yeah and that's what we had mentioned earlier. If you're going to be successful against the Angels you're going to get the guys out ahead of Trout and Pujols. Don't pitch to them when they have a chance to drive in runs. Playoff to the left. Calhoun's done a nice job battling against lefty pitching this season. I think over 300 against the Southpaws. 50 points higher than his average against righties, which suggests to me that he's strong out over the plate. Fastball and breaking ball going away from him from left handed pitchers hasn't been a concern for him. And it looks like the Blue Jays might get somebody up in the pen. Just in case 
This gets away from Happ a little bit. Remember, he set down 13 in a row coming into this inning, a double, a walk, heart of the order coming up, and Joe Biagini's been told just to start getting loose. Swing and a miss, two and two. Good lively fastball there, tempting for Calhoun. Jay Happ had a double play back in the first. CJ Crone hit one right to Darwin Barney, who stepped on the bag and threw the first to get out of the first inning. 20th double play they've turned behind Jay Happ this season. The Blue Jays haven't scored enough runs to make Pete Walker relax lately. <laughs> Here's the 2 2. Runs off the outside corner where the count is now full to Calhoun. Pretty patient hitter. He'll take a walk. The Angels looking for a big inning. Coward let it off with a double, then Petit walked. And now it's a full count on Calhoun with Trout in the on deck circle. Everybody is safe. Boy, that's a bad break, and perhaps limping as he goes back toward the mound. But if he doesn't get hit by that ball, it's going to go right to Tulowitzki. But Hap, he's had a tough time on balls hit back to the mound. Watch this ball come right back, and Hap gets hit in the left foot. Tulowitzki was camped out waiting for it at shortstop. That's a double play if it gets past him. Hap got hit twice in a start in Oakland once on the arm and once in the butt this time it hits him in the foot and it got him pretty flush. You can see him limping as he started back into fair territory now he's trying to walk it off Mike Frost had the assistant trainer up to check on Jay Hap. Of course a couple of years ago he got hit in the head on a line drive off the bat of Desmond Jennings and that was a very frightening situation and. He hurt his knee when he collapsed on the mound. But he got hit flush on the forearm in Oakland starting against the A's. He was able to stay in that game. Biagini has now started throwing in the bullpen. Hap threw one warm up pitch and then gave Mike Frostad and John Gibbons the thumbs up says he's OK. So that's good news. The bad news is he's got to deal with the bases loaded, nobody out situation, and one of the game's best players coming up in a Mike Trout. Trout singled in the first inning and hit a pretty deep fly ball to right in the fourth. Rap has six strikeouts. He'd love to get a strikeout here and set up a potential inning ending double play. But he's got a tough customer in Mike Trout. And Trout has struck out 108 times coming into this game. That's the most by an angel this season. Down and away ball one. Trout's got four career grand slams. And some pretty big numbers a 383 batting average, as you can see in his career with the bases loaded. Happ in a tough spot a double a walk and then an infield hit to load the bases with nobody out. On the outside corner Trout didn't love the call it's one and one. Yeah it just nips that outside corner and Happ has six strikeouts as we mentioned he now has nine hundred and ninety eight career strikeouts. One one on the way. Sent foul off to the right one and two. Yeah this is the problem with Trout. He's got such a short swing and he can foul off those tough pitches. 
to me this is where Hap can elevate it. I know you're looking for a double play but you might be able to strike him out if you throw that fastball up and in right now because with two strikes he's really covering the outside part of the plate. One two high with a fastball two balls and two strikes. Yeah they took a shot up and in but Trout wouldn't go after it. Trout has such good speed he's only grounded into four double plays this season. In the left field a base hit. One run is home and a second run will come home to tie the game on a two run single by Mike Trout. Uh, Trout didn't really crush that ball he got enough of it to get it through the left side of the infield the third hit of the inning plus a walk. He may have hit this off the end of the bat and he is so strong he pulled it through the left side of the infield past the diving Josh Donaldson. Coward comes in to score and right behind him Petit comes around third he's going to score to tie it up. And Pete Walker is at the mound talking with Happ. Eugenie continues to throw in the bullpen. This inning began with Happ having set down 13 in a row. Then Coward hit one down the right field line for a double. Petit walked in a full count pitch. And then how different the inning might have been had the ball off the bat of Calhoun not hit Happ in the foot. If it goes by Happ through his legs whatever. Tulowitzki standing right near second base and in all likelihood it's a double play it would be runner at third two down with Trout coming up. Instead Trout comes up with the bases loaded nobody out singles in a pair now here's Pujols looking to give the Angels the lead. Well you hear it all the time but a game is truly a game of inches if that misses his foot it's going to be a double play. Tulowitzki was shaded directly behind the mound and that ball was headed in his direction. That gets away from Martin and both runners will advance. Will likely be scored as a wild pitch. I think they got crossed up because Hap once again calls out Russell Martin to have a little conversation. Watch how Russell goes after this pitch. It just got past him. I don't know that he did get crossed up. He just never got over to his right in front of it. Tries to catch it in the dirt and that's costly as those runners move up. Eliminating that possibility of a ground ball double play. It's a wild pitch charged to half. And now we'll see how the Blue Jays play it on the infield. They may play back and concede a run. It looks like that's what they're going to do to try to keep this from turning into a big inning. They'll give up a run to get it out. You draw the infield in and a base hit goes through it and two run scores. So a lot of times managers will play the infield back with runners at second and third. But it may pull the infield in with a runner just at third base and now another conversation between Happ and Mark. Yeah this is really interesting they've, they've had two or three conversations this inning. And I know he had retired 13 in a row he hadn't pitched with men at second base but in this inning Cowherd let it off with a double he's pitched the entire inning with a guy at second base. Pujols has singled and flied out. Went four for four with a home run last night. Here's the 1 0. Pujols has 99 RBIs trying to reach that 100 RBI plateau for the 13th time in his career. And you can see how he's driven in 99 runs, 326 with runners in scoring position. Chased away and it's one and two. Who holds now 36 years of age his fifth year with the Angels after 11 phenomenal seasons with San Francisco. Uh, with St. Louis rather what am I saying with St. Louis his average year with the Cardinals 41 doubles 40 homers and a 328 average that's his average year with the Cardinals up the middle and through a base hit. Another run will come in to score. Calhoun will score. Trout had to wait to see if it would get through. He stops at third. Pujols with RBI number 100 on the season, and the Angels have a 3 to 2 lead, and that's going to be the end of the night for Jay Happ. After five outstanding innings, he does not get an out here in the sixth and will come out of the ballgame. Boy, absolutely amazing after retiring 13 in a row. 
a leadoff double and then he walked the number nine hitter Gregorio Petit and Calhoun hit that ball off his foot and he just couldn't get things turned around here in the sixth. So half leaves and rookie right hander Joe Biagini will come in the Angels now have a lead on the Blue Jays. Runs here in the top of the sixth inning. He leaves with the Angels leading three to two. Hopefully the foot is okay. Big picture, that line drop that he took off, and it appeared to be okay. And now here comes Joe Biagini into another close game. Yeah, Biagini has certainly earned the right to pitch in these ball games. He has thrown so well all season long. This will be his 46th appearance of the season. He's long 51 and two-thirds innings, and he has overpowered the right-handed hitters. He needs a strike out of here, ground ball, something to stem the tide. Angels have scored three runs in this inning. Still nobody out. Runners at first and third, so Biagini looking for a little damage control right now. Trout's at third. Pujols is at first, just picked up his 100th RBI on the season. And the batter is CJ Crone over two. Hit into a double play back in the first inning. Takes a big looping curveball in for a strike. Boy, such a good pitch in a situation like this. He's got confidence to drop that hook in there, and he has really taken the upper hand in this at bat against Crone. Popped up back of the plate. Martin back for a look, but it's well back into the seats. When Biagini can come out of the bullpen and throw a first pitch curveball for a strike. That really puts a lot of concern into the hitter's head. They know he's got a good fastball. He cuts the ball very well and he throws that third best pitch for a strike. And now he's really got to finish off this at bat. Don't give Crone too much more to think about. Go right after him. Here's the 0-2. Fastball swung on, grounded to second. Barney shovels to Tulowitzki and on to first for the double play, but the run will come in to score to make it 4-2 to two Angels. Now, Biagini did a good job as Trout comes in to score. And close the book on Jay Happ as he is charged with all four of those runs. But Biagini, an 0 2 count for me, that's when the hitter's most vulnerable. Make another good pitch, and chances are you're going to get him out. Crow, no RBI on the double play, obviously, as Trout comes in to score. So a four run inning and a 4 2 lead for the Angels. A team that is 20 games under 500, trying to take a series from the Blue Jays. As Andrelton Simmons takes a little low ball one. Washington continues to lead Baltimore 1 0. The Orioles are now batting in the top of the seventh inning. Max Scherzer still in the game. Six innings, one hit, eight strikeouts, and only 67 pitches as the Orioles come up in the top of the seventh. Red Sox lost two to one earlier this afternoon. 
Blue Jays trying to capitalize but now trailing. The surprise in that Washington game is the fact that Ubaldo Jimenez has allowed just one run on five hits through six innings. He's been pressed into action since Tillman's gone on the DL. Had a terrible season at ERA up in the high sixes. There's a strike, two and one. Mike Trout in the middle of it, a two run single this inning. Came around to score on the double play ball. Albert Pujols with an RBI single, picking up the 100th RBI of the season for him, the 13th time in his illustrious career that he's achieved that milestone. At the knees, and it's two and two. Gina going through that little routine that he's got between pitches, tapping the ball a couple of times on his chest, now staring into Martin, works with a pretty good pace, trying to put away Simmons and end the inning. Curveball popped out of play. Yeah, Simmons was able to just deflect it enough to hit it into the seats, but B. Gini's made some tough pitches on him. Guy expected to be used sparingly in, in mop up situations has become a critical part of the bullpen. Pitching in the middle innings in close games time after time. Missed away. Biagini worked an inning in a third on Tuesday, game one of this three game series. He able to hit and had a strikeout. He's earned the confidence of his manager, that's for sure. Fly ball to right field. And that's the inning. But the Angels get four. One of them coming in on Albert Pujols' RBI single, giving him 100 RBIs on the season, and the Angels have the lead. Boy, that came awfully quickly after he had retired 13 straight. Number eight hitter, Caleb Cowherd, Caleb Cowherd hit a double down the right field line, then the big walk to the number nine hitter, and then the wheels really came off for him. Martin swings at the first pitch from Jared Weaver and pops it up on the infield, prone in to make the play. Hap start tonight may generate more conversation, Buck, about the extended rest of the six man rotation, which may be in the rearview mirror right now with Sanchez down and Dunedin and expected back for the Baltimore series. No off day in this stretch of games right now. But uh, I asked John Gibbons before the game, have you set out the rotation after the Baltimore series? 
And he was a little bit coy as Gibby can be and he goes oh Pete's got the information and uh, what do you expect to happen there's an off day right after the Baltimore series. Do you think they'll go through all six again starting down in Tampa Bay next Friday after Sanchez starts on Wednesday the yeah. 31st it's going to be interesting. Personally I don't think they're going to do it. I think they're going to go back to five. And I'm not sure how they're going to do it but I think. You know the results have been kind of mixed and nobody really wants to point to it but. I know Ross Hatton's the GM feels like the pitcher should be more rested at this point. But the flip side of that is they're pitching out of their normal routine. But you could look at Jay Hap's first four innings and said he didn't bother him one bit. Mark Shapiro Ross Atkins. Ball one to Troy Tulowitzki for what it's worth. And again I don't know if anybody really knows whether it has contributed to the results or not but Estrada will be on regular rest Monday night in Baltimore. Hap will be on regular rest Tuesday night in Baltimore. Sanchez of course will be on a whole start off basically 10 days. He's thrown a couple of side sessions or will down in Dunedin. Then they've got an off day. As Tulowitzki is retired and then it will get really interesting. There are three off days in September so three off days in the four weeks. Will the Blue Jays stay with six will they go back down to five and if it is five who's the odd man out. Yeah and obviously they have had so much success as far as keeping their starters healthy. The addition of Francisco Liriano and the way he threw his last time out very encouraging. He will open up the series tomorrow night against Minnesota his former team. Kevin Pillar the batter. The Orioles don't score in the top of the seven the Washington now batting in the bottom of the seventh having lead to leading one to nothing and Scherzer's having an amazing night seven innings one hit no walks eight strikeouts and only seventy six pitches. Lined in the left field a solid two out single for Pilar. Blue Jays Rogers 4K broadcast is powered by the Samsung 4K SUHD TV. So with another huge crowd, another sellout here at the Rogers Center, they're now looking for some offense after the Angels have taken the lead. They're up 4-2, bottom of the sixth. Tying run at the plate right now with Melvin Upton Jr. One for two. He doubled and scored back in the second. Takes up and away ball one. For the season, Upton has 19 home runs. He got a low fastball from Weaver in the second inning, hit a double, and came around to score on the sack fly. Scoring the first run of the game. Signs being sent out to the catcher from manager Mike Sosha. If you're a catcher playing for Mike Sosha, you got a hands on manager. <laughs> Very involved. Obviously, one of the game's great defensive catchers during his playing days, Mike Sosha. Well, too, he has high standards, and there are certain things that he needs from his catcher. And I asked him a couple of years ago, I said, What's the most important thing for a catcher to do? And he said, Catch the 1 1 pitch, make it a strike. Things are so dramatic and here we are in this situation now at a ball and a strike but the difference between a 2 1 count and a 1 2 count is dramatic. Runner goes and it's pulled foul by Upton but Pilar got a good jump. pilar has got 10 steals he's been caught five times and a young catcher behind the plate Jet Bandy has a cannon for an arm he's thrown out 40 percent of the runners. At 14 of 35 so far this season. They've been looking for an everyday catcher for a while now. So the count now one and two on Upton. The Angels leading the Blue Jays here in the bottom of the sixth inning. Yeah. 
And if you think Jet Mandy is working with Mike Sosha for the first time when he came to the big leagues, you're mistaken because Sosha coached Jet Brandt Mandy as a kid. Mike's son played with Jet as a youngster, and Mike coached the team. That's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> and to manage him in the big leagues all these years later. Still takes them out for ice cream after they win, like you might have done when they were when they were 11 years old. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> Meanwhile, Jared Weaver has been getting it done, bobbing and weaving, no pun intended, his way through five and two thirds so far. He's given up two runs, including the home run to Donaldson, but he's got the lead. He's held the Blue Jays to four hits so far. The runner goes again, and up to the bangs, went into center field, a base hit. Pilar, with the benefit of being on the move, will come around to third on the play. The return of Jose Bautista has lengthened the lineup, and now Upton's been on base twice with a couple of hits. Pilar was running on the pitch. That's a spinning breaking ball, not much bite to it. And Upton stays on it and hits it right back up the middle. Pilar freezes around second. Easily going in the third, and the Blue Jays trying to cut back into this angel lead. So runners on the corners with two down, and that'll prompt a visit from Charlie Nagy, the pitching coach for the Angels. Terrific pitcher back in his day. Well, Nagy comes out to the mound as the Angel bullpen will start to go to work. Just a chance to give Weaver a breather here with two outs. And right hander Jose Valdez is up in the bullpen right now for the Angels. He worked an inning in last night, was the seventh inning guy in last night's game for the Angels. Could be last batter either way for Weaver here as he faces Ezekiel Carrera. Darwin Barney on deck should the inning continue. Tying run at first, go ahead run at the plate for the Blue Jays. Angels thinking that Upton could be on the move. Not the worst idea in case the Angels maybe are afraid to throw down if Pilar would try to scamper home. Upton has 23 steals for the season. He's been caught seven times. There's three as a member of the Blue Jays, all in the same game. Not going. And Carrera looks at a strike. Uh, the reason that Weaver is so concerned about the base runner at first is because he throws a lot of slow breaking balls and fastballs not that quick to the catcher. And he has that long delivery. And again, Sosha giving the running game signs to Jet Bandy. There he goes. Swing and a miss. Throw through is not in time. Yeah, there were plenty of reasons for Upton to run. Weaver is slow to the plate, throws a lot of slow breaking balls. His fastball is in the lower 80s, and Upton got a terrific jump. Andy shows a strong arm, but he didn't have much of a chance to gun down Upton. So now a base hit could tie it, but Weaver's out in front of Carrera. No balls and two strikes. Attention and the body language of both managers right now as they look on here in the sixth inning. Pilar at third, Upton at second. And the 0 2 to Carrera swung on and hit high in the air down the right field line. Calhoun over to the seats will not have a play. Gets a reprieve. He'll get another shot. Boy, he went through a stretch earlier this year where he came up with a lot of big hits. Got a chance to play fairly regularly and was a real contributor for a few weeks. For the season, he's batting 368 with runners in scoring position. Takes in the dirt. 
Wouldn't bite on that changeup from Weaver. Jose Bautista a couple of spots away if it continues that far this inning. Back in the lineup, DHing leading off has a sack fly tonight to drive in a run. And another change up in the dirt. But it's the third time that these Blue Jays have faced Weaver tonight. They have a pretty good idea that you don't have to be aggressive on the fastball. You've got to be patient, make sure you see it out of his hands before you commit. Weaver's got his sign. And the 2 2. Curveball bounced foul. Pretty good at bat here being put together by Carrera. Yeah, it sure is. And he's done a nice job hanging back, not so aggressive to attack that ball, let it come to him. And he was able to fight off that breaking ball and foul it off, keep the at bat alive. Tying runs aboard for the Blue Jays here with two down on the sixth. And again, the 2 2 pitch. Chopped foul again. Another changeup, and Mandy's going to go out and talk to Weaver right now. Instead of sitting back there wondering what Weaver wants to throw, you go out and talk to him. Mandy's a big hit. Weaver is 6 7, and Mandy's about 6 4. Does a nice job moving around behind the plate, but Weaver now has delivered his thoughts to the young catcher. Jay Happ looking on from the dugout. Did not get it out in the sixth inning after five great innings. Josh Donaldson is homer tonight for the Blue Jays, his 29th on the season. Joe Biagini's the pitcher in the game right now for the Blue Jays. Trying to see if Ezekiel Carrera can come up with a clutch hit. Another foul off. 70 miles an hour. He's flipping it up there right now, and we were, he's not going to panic. He'll continue to. Try to make good pitches in this key situation. I think you made a great point, Dan. I think this will probably be his last batter, no matter what happens. At 96 pitches right now, Valdez is ready in the bullpen if needed. Upstairs, and the count is full. I got to believe he's going to throw him a breaking ball. He's got a base open. He knows this is his last batter. The right handed hitter on deck. He's not going to give in to Carrera. I don't believe throwing a fastball. He's been throwing a lot of curveballs and changeups in this at a bat. This will be the 10th pitch of this battle between Weaver and Carrera. And he takes low ball four. Went with another change. Bounced it in. And a well earned base on balls for Ezekiel Carrera to load them up. Yeah, Weaver just wasn't going to give him a fastball after Carrera had seen so many pitches in the at bat. And indeed, here's Mike Sosha. He makes the call to the bullpen. So the Blue Jays have a chance to get right back in this game. Weaver will leave with the bases loaded and two outs. He's allowed just five hits, and he leaves with a two run lead. Valdez on to face Barney with the bases loaded here at Rogers Center.
Bases loaded a two out situation the Blue Jays saw him last night when he worked the seventh but he did not face Darwin Barney last night he's going to be the first battery faces tonight. Yeah he came in to the seventh inning got to the whiskey to ground out and then Michael Saunders hit a base hit. But that was all that Valdez would yield to the Blue Jays this is his tenth game we were masterful job. Making great pitches all night long, keeping the Blue Jay hitters off stride to the tune of two runs on five hits. The only big blow was the home run by Donaldson. This all started with two outs and nobody on. Pilar singled, was running on the play when Upton singled. Pilar went to third. Upton stole second. Then Carrera, a 10 pitch walk. The bases are loaded with two down, and Valdez facing Barney. Almost got hit by that breaking ball. You know, it's one of those situations where had he known right away it was a breaking ball. <laughs> you know maybe he takes one for the team right there but it was coming up and in. And he barely got out of the way it actually looked like it went over his shoulder as he turned his back on it. And right back to the breaking ball for a strike. Yeah, and I like that call by the young catcher because the pitcher threw a hanger and he was fresh in his mind the feeling of a bad breaking ball. So you come right back with a good one and you allow him to finish up the pitch and make a much better pitch on the second breaking ball. One one. Another breaking ball up the middle, but there near second to make the play. Is Petit and the Blue Jays will leave the bases loaded in the sixth. At the end of six, Jared Weaver and the Angels leading four to two. is everything for Blue Jays fans. It lets you stay up to date with the latest scores, breaking news, game highlights, and analysis of Canada's team. Plus, never miss a single pitch with our in-depth live game tracker. It's available on iOS and Android devices. And a great job, as always, by Shai Davidi, Ben Nicholson-Smith, and Arden Zwelling, guys. They do a fantastic job covering this team on sportsnet.ca. They sure do, keeping you up to date every single day. 4-2 the Angels lead as we go to the top of the seventh. Joe Biagini is back on the mound for the Blue Jays and he'll face Jet Bandy, Nick Buss, and Caleb Cowart. Six, seven, eight hitters for the Angels. And Biagini, who had a long rest in the dugout as the Blue Jays loaded the bases. There was a pitching change, but they couldn't cash in. And now Biagini is back out there, and he could be out there for a while. The series beginning tomorrow night, and John Gibbons doesn't want to use too many guys tonight that he might need tomorrow night. Last night, Scott Feldman went an inning and a third through 44 pitches. You'd think he's out of the loop tonight. Aaron Loop went an inning and two thirds through 34 pitches, so you would think he is unavailable tonight. 
Ben Ron Grilly haven't pitched since Saturday in Cleveland. But unless you get the lead and until you get the lead or tie it up, I don't think you're going to see either one of those guys. They're trying to save as many bullets for them as they can. One, two. Lays off the breaking ball. Eugenie has shown the ability at times to to pitch a couple of innings maybe even more than that just at 14 pitches right now. Down in Arlington the Rangers have a three to nothing lead over the Indians who are scuffling a little bit lately and the newest member of the Texas Rangers has made his presence felt already the Rangers just picked up and then called up Carlos Gomez. He got a start in left field, first start for them tonight, and he's hit a three run homer off Josh Tomlin. Cole Hamill's pitching well, pitching with the lead right now for Texas. There's another ball that finds its way between third and short. How many times have we seen Donaldson diving to his left but to no avail? A lot of things have changed, but one thing hasn't. Honda, official vehicle of the Toronto Blue Jays, proud fan since 1977. Roof closed, some heavy rain earlier this afternoon and this evening here in Toronto. Dan Schulman and Buck Martinez back with you at Rogers Center. A 4 2 lead for the Angels, leadoff man aboard for Nick Buss. Gets the bunt down, it's a good one. And Donaldson cannot pick it cleanly may not have had a play even if he had been able to pick it up cleanly and the first two men are aboard for the Angels. Nick Buss had a bunt single in the opener on Tuesday night similar situation but he just squares around not a whole lot of surprise and look how quickly he gets squared around and then he bends his knees to go down with that baseball and drops down a beauty. Donaldson was on the edge of the grass he was guarding against the bunt but it's such a good bunt that. He had no chance to make a playoff. I don't understand why more guys don't use the bunt for a base hit. You pick up one bunt base hit a week. It's 50 points on your batting average over the course of a full season. Joaquin Benoit, Brett Cecil have just started throwing. The bunt could be on again here with a coward up, although more of a sacrifice situation than bunting for a base hit. Pops it up and caught by Biagini. Throw to first, but back safely is Buss. Well, Biagini was just a little hesitant before he thought about first. His number one concern, of course, was catching the pop up, but he took an extra step and then realized, hey, I got a shot at first. Had he made a quicker throw, he might have been able to double up Buss at first. But watch Biagini's reaction right there, and then he looked at second initially. Had he looked at first, they may have been able to double up Buss. Well, Buss was slow getting back when the ball was in the air, and even after Biagini had caught it, Barney came in behind him and was close at first. Now Pete Walker is out to the mound to talk over the situation. First and second with one out for Gregorio Petit. And starting to wind your way back around to Trout and Pujols again. Now Petit had a key at bat in the sixth inning with Coward at second after the double, and Petit drew the walk. That set up the entire inning in my mind. They are going to the bottom of the eighth now in Washington. Max Scherzer still throwing a shutout. It is one nothing Nationals as Washington comes up in the bottom of the eighth. Washington leading Baltimore. Blue Jays looking for some help in the out of town scoreboard tonight. Petit has struck out and walked. And a strike. Biagini has been very impressive, not only. But the quality of his pitches, but the composure he shows for a rookie after catching that pop up. He was still looking around to see where he might get the next out. 
be interesting to see next year with the Blue Jays picking up Liriano who signed through next year kind of looks like they have a full rotation for next season. He of course was a starter in the minors and I think long term the Blue Jays are certainly considering Biagini as a starter. But do they keep him in the big leagues as a reliever or now that he's gone through the whole year as a rule five guy do they send him down to Buffalo stretch him out as a starter with the minors and then call him up when they have a need. Here comes Carrera charging over near the line makes the catch just in foul territory for out number two. And here comes the skipper. Presumably he wants Cecil for Calhoun. He wants the lefty lefty matchup. So Biagini goes an inning in two thirds tonight and here comes Cecil jogging in to try to make sure the Angels don't add to their lead any further. to go when an inning did not give up a run but he did give up a hit and the guy he gave up the hit to is the guy who's in the batter's box right now Cole Calhoun. Yeah Brett Cease is a huge part of this Blue Jays bullpen and you'd love to get him back on track where he was last season down the stretch he was practically unhittable. So they got a chance to strand a pair of base runners here Blue Jays down by two. Calhoun is one for three tonight had the infield hit off the foot of Hap in the fifth inning and came around to score. Mike Trout's next Albert Pujols behind him this will be a one batter appearance in all likelihood for Cecil Ben was ready in the bullpen. Trout's had a, a big night tonight a couple of hits a couple of RBI's. Breaking ball down and away ball two. This is one of the areas where the game has changed so much. It's it's almost automatic right now. The lefty comes in to face the lefty, even if it's a one batter appearance. The righty's on deck, so the right-handed pitcher gets up in the pen. Years ago, a guy like Biagini just would have kept fin going. Finished the game. Yeah. Down by two. You pitch him until the hitters catch up to him. But you're right it's universal and there aren't many managers that deviate from this type of approach it's a two run game. And Cecil has got the left hander with a chance to get out of the inning but now he falls behind three and oh. Well you think he'll get a freebie here you wouldn't think that Calhoun will be swinging three and oh with Trout on deck. And a high strike three and one. You can sense impatience from the crowd with Cecil more than with more most other players on this team with the up and down nature that he's had this season so good in the second half of last year didn't give up an earned run in the second half of the regular season last year. 
He was an all star in 2013. And he walked him. Walked him to load the bases for Trout. And here comes John Gibbons already. So Cecil can't get the one guy they wanted him to get. And now Benoit is going to have to come in and face Trout with the bases loaded. Trout was batting with the bases loaded back in the sixth when he had the two run single to left. So we will step aside again. Benoit coming in to face Trout. Of the season on Marco Estrada in the first inning. Dug down to get that change up just above the ankles. Had a big night last night, having a big night tonight. He's already driven in a couple and he comes up up right now with the bases loaded and two down. Yeah, and obviously no place to put him. And he's had some success against Joaquin Benoit. He's two for five going up against the big righty. Benoit has not pitched since Saturday through an inning. That game on Saturday in Cleveland through just 12 pitches. And off day Monday, he's not pitched in the first two games of this series. Now he's given a tough situation here in the seventh. Needless to say, a big moment. The Blue Jays already down two. The Blue Jays had the bases low to the bottom of the sixth with two out, couldn't score. The Angels trying to do some damage here in the top of the seventh. And that just misses outside for ball one. Brett Cecil came on to face Cole Calhoun and he walked him. Been a tough year for the free agent to be. Blue Jays all season long have been searching searching for answers from the left side in the bullpen. Ripped into left field a base hit. And Mike Trout has done it again. The single will score two. And now they've got Calhoun in the rundown and they will call him out. That will be the inning but not before Mike Trout drives in two more runs given four RBIs on the night seventh inning stretch and the Angels now lead six to two.
Massachusetts that the Red Sox lost earlier today and the Orioles are trailing tonight. Not good news here inside Rogers Center though. The Angels 20 games under 500 looking to take two out of three from the Blue Jays. Angels tacking on Mike Trout who else four RBIs tonight Joe Biagini the long scoreless streak that he was on comes to an end and you feel for him a little bit he got stuck with a couple of earned runs pitched well gave up the leadoff base got three outs in the sixth then gave up the leadoff base hit in the seventh then a bunt single a pop up a fly ball and then he was lifted as John Gibbons wanted the lefty lefty matchup Cecil and Calhoun Cecil walked Calhoun on five pitches and then Trout laced one into left field for a two run single off Benoit Bautista leads off the seventh in his return tonight he has struck out had a sack fly and flied out. It'll be Bautista Donaldson and Encarnacion on the top of the Blue Jay lineup. They have their work cut out for them. Picked nicely by Petit at second for out number one. Drive of the game is brought to you by Honda, official vehicle of the Toronto Blue Jays, proud fan since 1977. Josh Donaldson squares up a fastball from Jared Weaver and hits it deep into the WestJet right deck in center field. Home run number 29 for Donaldson. And just his second home run since the first week of August down in Houston. But Donaldson really drilled that one. He hit a ball hard in the second as well. That just goes to show you again, you can't take any team for granted, can't take any team lightly. No matter where they are in the standings, no matter what they may be playing for, Mike Sosha's team has come in here really struggling. They had lost 14 out of their last 17 entering the series, lost the opener. Played well last night, beat the Blue Jays 8 to 2, and now up 6 to 2 in the seventh inning tonight. One and two. Blue Jays will take on another team that's had a rough season in the Minnesota Twins starting tomorrow night, a three game weekend series. Francisco Liriano, Marcus Stroman, and R.A. Dickey will be the starters in that series. Well, you make a great point about not taking anybody for granted, but you look at the schedule and say, okay, well, they got the Angels of Minnesota. We should be able to make some hay. And you know, I don't think the Blue Jays were looking ahead to the next road trip with Baltimore, Tampa Bay, and New York. But well, you got to guard against these kind of games. And you know, the Angels, they have everything to play for and nothing to lose. Runs in on him. Two balls and two strikes. Playing for pride at this point, obviously. And when your season is lost like the Angels, I mean, they have nothing to do but knock off the front runners trying to play the spoiler role. Big cut and a foul back by Donaldson. A little frustrated, felt he missed one that he should have done some damage with. He's had dirt all over his pants in his jersey the entire series he has spent three nights diving to his left as the Angels time after time have found that hole between third and short. Pujols and Trout have really worn out that hole and Donaldson goes around. This copyrighted telecast is presented by Authority of Rogers Blue Jays Baseball Partnership. It may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form, and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of Rogers Blue Jays Baseball Partnership. Donaldson drilling a home run back in the fifth inning. That's one of the few bright spots for the Blue Jays tonight, especially in the last couple of innings. The Angels getting four in the sixth, two in the seventh. Getting a good performance from Jared Weaver in and out of some trouble but minimize the damage two runs through five and two thirds and now getting a nice job out of the bullpen from Jose Valdez. Check swing by Encarnacion two and one.
So four nothing the Nationals lead the Orioles now in the bottom of the eighth Red Sox lost earlier today. Cleveland getting pummeled by Texas Detroit won. And American League Central's not quite a done deal the way the Tigers are playing right now. If Cleveland loses tonight it sure looks like they will their lead over Detroit will be down to four and a half. Liner to center field but Trout is there and that's all for the Blue Jays in the seventh they go in order and it remains the Angels six and the Blue Jays two. Place all time in home runs with 584. Two more, he'll tie Frank Robinson for ninth, and in the next year or two, could pass more names and move up near the top five. Yeah, he's had a terrific career, and tonight he drove in his 100th run. But the home run most impressive. He's well within reach of 600 home runs, and no telling how far up that leaderboard he's going to go before he ends. He's got a chance to get up in the top five, as you mentioned earlier, Ben. Tonight he's two for three with an RBI. Mike Trout's three for four with four RBIs. So Trout and Pujols tonight are five for seven with five RBIs. Last night they were seven for nine. They're 12 for 16 in the last two games. Man. Well, it's really. Impressive. I mean, obviously, Blue Jays come in saying, "Well, we can't let Trout and Pujols beat you," and we have seen them hit good pitches. The home runs they hit in the back-to-back -back game last night, and back-to-back -back in the first, both of them were decent pitches. The first was a changeup to Trout, the second a cutter to Pujols. Not all base hits, not all home runs are hit on mistakes. And we've seen a good example of that with Tron Pujols throughout the series. Benoit came on last inning, gave up the base hit to Trout that scored a couple, and Calhoun was caught in a rundown to end the inning. So this is just the second batter that Benoit faces. They're a little thin in the pen right now. The Blue Jays have been so used to getting so many innings out of the rotation all season long. They got six and two thirds out of Dickey in the first game of this series, just five out of Estrada last night, just five, five plus, if you will, out of Jay Happ here tonight. That hasn't happened very often to the Blue Jays this season. And the bullpen's been taxed a little bit the last couple of days. For the season, the Blue, Blue Jays starters have done a great job averaging nearly seven innings per start. Best in the American League, but it's a different story. Last couple of nights, and they've had to dig down deep into their pen. Strata going five innings last night. He'll start the opening game of the series at Baltimore on Monday night. Three and two, the count on Pujols. 
And a fly ball well hit to right center field. Carrera racing back, makes the catch just shy of the track. Get a hit of color during Canada's Color Expert Sale. Only at Home Hardware and Building Center locations. Homeowners helping homeowners with expert advice. Dan Schulman and Buck Martinez with you at Rogers Center where the Angels have a 6-2 to two lead on the Blue Jays. The batter is C.J. Crone 0 for 3 including a couple of double plays he's hit into tonight. Swing and a miss at that first pitch slider from Benoit. Hap went five plus innings tonight four runs all earned on six hits walked one struck out six. Eugenie gets charged with two runs in an inning and two thirds Cecil faced a batter and walked him. Benoit working here to Crone in the eighth with the bullpen quiet. Swinging a foul back one and two is J.C. Ramirez is now up in the bullpen for the Angels. He worked the eighth inning in last night's game. Hard thrower. He gave up a run in last night's game. So Martin had an RBI base hit against him, but with that comfortable lead, it wasn't a lead. It wasn't a big issue last night. And a bouncing ball will get through between first and second in a right field, a base hit for Chrome. Angels had 17 hits in last night's game. That is their 10th hit here tonight. Well, they have out hit the Blue Jays in the series. The Blue Jays just haven't had any big innings where they could really put the hits back to back. Andrelton Simmons 0 for 3. And Minnesota is in tomorrow night. They were beaten by Detroit today. The Twins are 49 and 78. That's the worst record in the American League. The second worst record in baseball. Only Atlanta is worse. But as the Blue Jays have found out, anybody can beat you on any given night. The Angels looking to take two out of three in the series. Pujols having some fun. Mike Trout's had a very big couple of nights. Runner is going. Pitch fouled off. Pujols continues to swing the bat very well, and we've marveled at his season this year. He has reached the 100 RBI plateau for the 13th time in his career, and he's got six hits in the series. Oh, and two the count on Simmons. Trout with four RBIs tonight, give him 82 on the season. A three for four night has raised his average to 316. 24 home runs, 21 steals, leading the league in walks. And just turned 25 a couple of weeks ago. He's had seven hits in this series. He's seven for 11 in the series. The crowd still keeping its enthusiasm. A wave going around Rogers Center. 0 2 again up and in, and it almost hit him. You know, it's hard to gain a lot of points this late in the season on your batting average, but Trout has raised his batting average eight points in this series. Came in batting 308, batting 316. Have so many at bats, a hit. Doesn't do much for your average, but you have a series like he has, and it'll jump a little bit. One, two. Taken in the dirt, two balls and two strikes.
So the outs are not coming easily right now for Benoit. Giving up hits to two of the three batters he's faced, trying to put away Simmons here with a two and two count and Jet Bandy waiting on deck. Benoit has thrown 17 pitches and Pitch counts a concern when you're thinking about the upcoming series with the Twins coming in. Into right field, a base hit. Up to second on the play goes Chrome. And Pete Walker's on the phone again. I wouldn't be shocked if the Blue Jays wound up making a roster move and just getting a fresh arm up for tomorrow night after the way the last couple of nights has gone. That's gone. a good call. Yeah. Obviously, use another optionable player, but you can't call Tapera back up. You can call Bull Schultz back up, and he's been up here a couple different times. Here's Bandy one for three. Line to short, back to second. That's a double play. Hit like a rocket, but the inning is over. Time now for a Blue Jays Central update here at Jamie Campbell and Greg's on in the Samsung Broadcast Studio. But one thing has it, Honda, proud fan since 1977, official vehicle of the Toronto Blue Jays. The Angels with a big four-run sixth inning added on a couple more in the seventh and a 6-2 to two lead over the Blue Jays going to the bottom of the eighth at Rogers Center. As Mike Sosha has brought right-hander J.C. Ramirez into the game. Big J.C. Ramirez. Pitched in last night's game, as we mentioned before, he pitched the eighth inning. He walked about it, gave up a couple of hits and a run. He's got a four-run cushion here as he works for the Blue Jays again in the eighth inning. He'll face the middle of the Blue Jays lineup: Martin Tulowitzki and Pilar. The Blue Jays just two runs on five hits tonight. Valdez retired all four batters he faced in relief of Jared Weaver. Martin tonight has walked, flied out, and popped up. Blue Jays have left seven men on tonight, including the bases loaded in the sixth inning. Their runs have scored on a sack fly by Bautista back in the second and a solo home run for Donaldson in the fifth. 
0 2. Sliced foul down the line. Nice grab. He knew he had it all the way. <laughs> you can smile. Yeah, you Just can really a smile. A good shot. <laughs> We're telling how that might have saved a fan as he stabs that ball before it goes into the seats, and the fans are doing the right thing, ducking for cover. Up and in. 96, a big arm for Ramirez. His fastball was tight on Russell Martin, and he bends out of the way. Probably thinking about getting a breaking ball and hung in there an awful long time. Chops one to short. Big bounce for Simmons. One down. Meanwhile, in the Blue Jays' pen, Jason Grilly is up. Looks like he'll be asked to work the top of the nine. Yeah, I'm sure Tom Gibbons would have just as soon not had to get Grilly up, but the pitching last night and tonight, they had to use the bullpen. And I agree with you. I think the Blue Jays might be contemplating a move for tomorrow's opener of the three game series against Minnesota. So with the one down, here's Troy Tulowitzki, who's 0 for 3 tonight. And another ground ball to short. It's not the guy you want to hit him to. He's one of the best out there. Simmons makes the play two down. Sure handed in a strong arm, and two quick counts for Ramirez here. The Jays are running out of opportunities. That'll bring up Kevin Pilar. One for three, had a base hit his last time up. They've gone final in Washington. The Nationals have defeated the Orioles four to nothing. So even if the Blue Jays lose tonight, they will not lose any ground to their two closest competitors with the Red Sox losing this afternoon. A loss tonight and it would be status quo. The Blue Jays tied with the Red Sox and the Orioles a game back. But some of those other teams in the wild card race would creep a little bit closer. Oh, this thing's going to get bunched up before uh -huh. it's all said and done. We're still in August. Simmons again. And that's the inning. Three ground balls to short. Eight in the books at Rogers Center. The Angels six and the Blue Jays two. Revolves around these two guys, Mike Trout and Albert Pujols, and Buck, that has certainly been the case the last couple of nights. They have 13 hits between them in 24 at bats, nine RBIs, and they're great hitters. And when you have your pre 
series meeting to go over the hitters and say, well, we can't let Trout and Pujol beat you. Well, they have. And they've done it together. And they've hit good pitches. It's not that the Blue Jays are just laying it in there for them. But they're two of the best hitters in the game. One advanced in his career. The other just starting out hasn't hit prime yet. And Mike Trout's got a lot of upside. And before it's all said and done, he may put up similar numbers to Albert Pujols. Fifth pitcher of the night for the Blue Jays, 39 year old right hander Jason Grilly making his 52nd appearance of the season when you combine his numbers with Atlanta and Toronto. has done such a nice job primarily as the setup man pitching the eighth when the Blue Jays have the lead. Comes on here to get a little work and because so many other guys have been used the last couple of nights. Like Benoit, Grilly hasn't pitched since Saturday in Cleveland. He had a clean inning, gave up a hit, struck out a batter, and gave up a run. Martin took the brunt of that foul ball. Well, the catchers always subjected to those foul tips. You got all of those pads, and you'd think it hit a pad. Nope. Hits him right in the shoulder. And that's why offensive catchers like Martin continue to put up good numbers is amazing the way they're beaten up over the course of a season got sore hands sore thumbs sore shoulders and he's still late in the season came on offensively with a big surge here lately one one hook to right field uh, Carreras had a busy night tonight one down. Looking ahead to the bottom of the ninth, the Blue Jays will bring up the bottom third in the order Upton, Carrera, and Barney. And it will be Fernando Salas who will come on for the Angels. Has been around a couple of different stints with the Angels. Has pitched for the Cardinals as well, has had some closing experience in his career. Caleb Coward is the batter. He is one for three, doubled and scored back in the four run sixth inning. That's the big inning in this game. Jay Happ through five. It pitched shut up all. It only given up a couple of hits. The inning began with Coward's double. Then Petit walked. And then maybe the key play in the game is the ball that Calhoun hit off the foot of Happ. Wound up going for an infield hit. If somehow it misses Happ, it probably winds up in Tulowitzki's glove on a bounce or two. And it looks like it would have wound up as a double play. Yeah, that's just how the breaks go when things aren't going your way. Instead of that ball getting past half, hit him on the foot, ends up as an infield hit. Bases loaded, nobody out, and then Trot delivers a two run single, and then Pujols right behind him, an RBI single. The 1 1 runs outside. Tomorrow night, Pat Dean, a left hander, one and three with a 548 ERA, will get the start for the Twins. Blue Jay left hander Francisco Liriano will start the opener for Toronto. Breaking ball for a strike. Liriano's start's going to be very interesting because of the way he threw last time out against Cleveland. He used a four seam fastball, a pitch that he's not used much in the past, and it proved to be very effective for him. So it'll be interesting to see if he can. Continue to implement that into his mix. It really complements his two seam fastball, his slider, and his changeup. Swing and a miss at a 93 mile an hour fastball, two down. Now, Grilly's done a terrific job since joining this Blue Jays bullpen. He was acquired in the trade on the end of May, May 31st. It's a fastball with a little late run. He's able to strike out. Coward who strikes out for a second time tonight. Devin Travis out again with that finger injury again. They're hopeful he can play tomorrow. The story's been kind of the same for the last three days now. Jose Bautista just returning to the active roster tonight. After missing some time with a knee injury. Yeah, you really are concerned about Travis with his hand. I know the Blue Jays are downplaying the significance of the injury, but anytime you have 
ligament damage or inflammation in your fingers it's tough to play baseball everything is about your hands and you can't use your hands you can't play. Boy, at times he has been such a spark at the top of the lineup for the Blue Jays. Well he has been so great after the All Star break and he's been able to really spark the lineup from that leadoff spot and they need him back. We mentioned the Blue Jays have had their eight regulars in the lineup just four times this season. One one. Take it high ball two two and one on Petit. One of the hottest hitters in baseball in the second half of the season. Yeah everybody knows what Altuve's done and Cabrera he hits like this all the time. Devin Travis has had a great second half. He's ahead of Mookie Bess who's putting up MVP numbers. But Devin Travis one of the bright young offensive players in the American League. Well, really has got a good fastball tonight. Really can really pitch upstairs with that fastball and you can see there's intensity even though his club is down by four he wants to finish off this inning and encourage his club for the possibility of a comeback. The two two foul to back going right after him again. Grizzlies agent is Gary Sheffield the hitter and Gary suggested to Jason that he become a high fastball breaking ball pitcher and that's allowed him to rack up the strikeouts it's been a nice little compliment to have it given to you from a hitter take a hitter's perspective and it's helped Jason continue to pitch very effectively. A little bit outside. If you're wondering about the Orioles and the Red Sox over the weekend, the Baltimore is headed to New York. They've got a series against the Yankees starting tomorrow night. And the Red Sox will be at home over the weekend to the Kansas City Royals. Knuckleballer Stephen Wright is coming off the disabled list for Boston and will start tomorrow night's game. 3 2. He did not go on the appeal, and that's a walk. He checked it on the breaking ball in the dirt. This is the 31st game Grilly has pitched for the Blue Jays and it's coming over in that trade from Atlanta. The check swing by Petit, who walks for a second time. He has had a strikeout in all but five games he's pitched in with the Blue Jays, and that's been one of the Reasons he's been able to be so successful. He doesn't allow the ball to be put in play that frequently. Cole Calhoun, the batter, pops up the first pitch to Lewitsky back, and the inning is over. To the bottom of the nine, last chance for the Blue Jays coming up. They are trailing six to two.
Blue Jays for a chance to win the chance to see the Blue Jays in Seattle. Visit BlueJays.com slash fan trip for details. I know both of you guys have seen the Blue Jays in Seattle over the years. It is a great place to watch the Jays play. Beautiful city, beautiful ballpark, and a pretty good baseball team this year. Yeah, very good baseball team and a great Blue Jays turnout. A lot of Blue Jay fans come down to Seattle for the series. This is Fernando Salas. Coming out of the bullpen try to close things out it is a non save situation. But he has pitched it back end of the bullpen in the past. Salas early in his career had 24 saves for the Cardinals in 2011. And a very good ERA at 228. Had Mel four saves this year. Melvin Upton Jr. leads off the inning. He's had a good night. Two for three a single and a double and he's got himself his third hit of the night. On his way to second with his second double of the evening. Now for a preview of what's coming up on Sportsnet Central. Here are Carly and Ivanka. All right, looking forward to that coming up at the end of this ball game. The Blue Jays trying to rally, trying to come up with something big here in the bottom of the ninth. Off to a good start with the double by Upton. Here's Carrera. Carrera has reached on an air, grounded out, and then earned a 10 pitch walk his last time up. That loaded the bases with two out in the sixth inning. But then Jose Valdez came on to retire Darwin Barney on a ground ball to strand all three runners. Well, the Blue Jays certainly want to get back to the top of the order, get those big bats up here in the ninth, and have a chance to come back in this game. And Pereira needs to get on base. Ball and a strike. If it holds up, Weaver gets the win. That would make him nine and eleven, and Jay Happ would suffer his first loss since early June. That would drop him to seventeen and four. Bouncer foul. Expertly grabbed by Tim Leeper, the first base coach. And Albert Pujols has had a good series, had a home run last night, had four hits last night, another productive night tonight. Up and in, almost knocks the helmet. Off Carrera's head is his next snap back. So the count now two and two. Breaking ball for strike three called. Carrera feeling it was high. Big out for Salas, first out of the inning here in the ninth. And take a look at this breaking ball. It spins and it is pretty high. That's a tough pitch to call for a strike, but Eric Cooper rings up Carrera for the first out of the inning. Not exactly where Salas wanted to throw that breaking pitch. So now Darwin Barney 0 for 2 with a walk. Upton at second with one down at the bottom of the ninth. A crowd of 46,273 here tonight. Breaking ball for a strike. No question about the support from the fan base. They have really come out in record numbers, and the Blue Jays are going to draw over 3 million people this year. And the best is yet to come month of September with a very good schedule here at home. Red Sox will be in ninth tenth and eleventh. Last home stand of the season is the Yankees and the Orioles. And it doesn't get any better than that. You're trying to win the East and you have those big boys coming in to play.
One ball two strikes to count on Barney. And the pitch from Salas is there for strike three call. This one an out away from ending just starting up on Sportsnet one just getting going right now the Giants and the Dodgers. How about the Dodgers. One of the game's great rivalries continues the Dodgers have taken the first two games of that series they've opened up a three game series on the Giants. This has never happened before where a team that had the best record in baseball at the All Star break has the worst record in baseball since the All Star break and that's what the Giants are going through right now. Yeah, the Dodgers have won four in a row. The Giants have lost four in a row. And it's been a very disappointing second half start for Bruce Bochy and the Giants. Here's Jose Bautista. 0 for 3 and a sack fly. Blue Jays down to their final out. Dodgers hoping to get Clayton Kershaw back at some point. He has started throwing again, has not pitched since late June. But they're scoring so many runs, they've managed to. To move into first place in the National League West, even with it seems like a change or two in their rotation every time they go around. Yeah, the Giants have just stopped hitting. Brandon Bell had a first half that was really impressive, and he hasn't done much in the second half at all. That's kind of a team slump. They haven't figured out any way to score any runs. Two and one on Bautista. Up to net at second, two down. And the pitch. Swinging the ball popped up third base side. Howard having a look, but it's going to be well back into the seats. Now, Jose missed 15 days on his most recent stint on the DL compared to five and a half weeks the first time he was on the DL. And tonight he's had some good at bats. He struck out on a high fastball his first time. I've had a sack fly. In the second, and his next two at bats in the fifth and in the seventh, he hit the ball hard, right out to center field, and hit a hot shot right to the second baseman. I think that's encouraging in this first game back off the DL. Held up, and it's a full count. Josh Donaldson next, if it continues. Good energy for some kids. Late at night, still hanging in there, better than three hours in. That's a fair ball. Upton will come home easily to score. Bautista on his way to second with an RBI double to make it six to three. Well, he's had a very successful return to the lineup. Second RBI of the night. His first hit, a double just inside the bag at third. Another breaking ball and it backed up. It didn't break away from Bautista. He's able to keep it fair over the bag at third and it's passed Coward down into the corner. Upton, who has three hits tonight himself, scores for the second time tonight. So the Blue Jays are one base runner away from getting the tying run to the plate. Donaldson is up and Carnacion is on deck. Donaldson is one for four tonight. He homered. To straightaway center back in the fifth. It's home run number 29 for Donaldson. Just got to get on board. Oh, and two. Dangerous hitters Edwin Encarnacion is waiting in the on deck circle just hoping for a chance to tie this game. He's had a little bit of success too in limited at bats against Salas. Let's see if he gets an opportunity. The 0 2. Donaldson sends a fly ball to right field and that will be that. The Angels come into Toronto and they take two out of three from the Blue Jays. Albert Pujols has a big series. 
Mike Trout has a big series. The only good news for the Blue Jays tonight is both the Red Sox and the Orioles lost as well. Yeah, that's about the only bright spot. And you come into a series against a team that's 20 games under 500. You expect to at least win the series. But the Angels won the series. They got some big hits, of course. Trout and Pujols do most of the damage, but Mike Sosha. For one of the few times this season has a big smile on his face as they take two or three from the Blue Jays and now the Jays got to turn the page quickly and start to focus on Minnesota tomorrow night. Weaver over half in front of a crowd of better than 46,000. 6-3 the Angels beat the Blue Jays. Time now for Sportsnet Central. Let's send you back to Carly and Ivanka.